Hi, I'm Greg Walker with Audio Technology Magazine and just talking to you today about the new Atom A7V studio monitors. They're a dual ported two-way speaker um, with the classic XART ribbon tweeters. They're a really nice um, near-field speaker that retails for probably just a bit over $2,000 in Australia. These speakers are beautifully made and they're definitely worth uh, investigating. My initial impression lasted for a whole month of mixing. I found, I found them very easy to work on. So i um, so I'll definitely give them the, the big tip there. Transparent would be the word I'd use. I was looking for, I guess, a kind of character, trying to identify the sound of them, but I immediately just sort of fell into just using them, which I think was a really good sign. I was a little bit surprised how uh, easily I could move from a very familiar set of speakers to a different set. Possibly the smoothness of the um, XR tweeter in these Atom speakers is probably reminiscent of the top end of my Questeds where I've got them set to be slightly rolled off in the top end. So it's a very sweet kind of neutral top end. To my ears they felt very natural and easy to work with straight off the bat. Certainly in my space, which is probably an eight by six metre space here, um, they just felt like a really good fit. Even though they're a near field monitor, they, they push right back to the back of the room and the imaging stays really nice and strong right, right to the back. So for a smallish speaker, they really punch. The A7Vs also have a little trick up their sleeve. If you did want to set them sideways rather than vertically, the waveguide's got to stay in the vertical plane, so we get the Allen key. They've cleverly put their logo on this adjustable face plate so that it's still gonna read well when we shift it over. And that kind of looks pretty nice too. It's just yeah. a different way of presenting your, your speakers and if you've got the a surface where this works better for you, you put, some, put a different monitor on top or whatever, so that's a nice little feature. The sound ID measurement system that um, integrates with this speaker is really interesting. It's basically you can measure your room using the sound ID reference mic or you can use another condenser if you don't have one of these. Um, you can get a very accurate reading using the Sonar Works, and then you can basically program that into the Atom speakers. So you use the A control software that comes with these speakers and you can select the room calibration setting and um, you can actually store that in the, in the hardware in the speaker so that once you've disconnected the networking, you can just press a button on the back of the speakers and go into that mode so the speakers will be fully calibrated for your room. Um, it's quite an interesting effect. I don't always find it's that useful for me. I think there's a difference between having a flat frequency response and a, a musical frequency response to mix to. But you can do things like just dial down the, the mix. I, I found it like 40% sounded really good. Um, gives you a bit more detail up top and, and sort of smooths out anything in the bottom end that might be a bit lumpy in your room. So it's, it's useful. Um, but I kept coming back to the pure setting just because in my space it just felt like the right sound straight off. So I think I'm a bit old fashioned. I'm still a bit suspicious of um, too much digital signal processing in a speaker. Um, obviously the technology has come a long way, but I still probably prefer the natural voicing of a speaker if it's... I'm fortunate that I've got a big space to work in. So if I'm working in a small bedroom, I think this technology becomes more and more valuable. Um, so it, it really depends on your situation and how the speakers react in your, in your space. The A control software um, that comes with the speakers is, is quite powerful. It's, it's a simple interface, but um, it allows you to select your speakers. And once you've registered the serial numbers into the software, it recognizes them and you basically set up a kind of a system ID. It um, allows you to control things like individual level on the speakers. If there's a slight discrepancy in your room or uh, you can put small delays on them. And also if you've got a bigger array, um, say a 5.1 system or something like that, it allows you to switch really quickly between a setup like that and a stereo 
subset of those speakers. So it's, it's quite a handy thing. It controls all your, the stuff that's on the back of these speakers, all the EQ settings and voicings and preset selections. And it also adds um, what they call the advanced adaptation, which is a six band, fully parametric EQ. It's got much bigger boosts and cuts in it than the onboard EQ, which is around the back of the, the speakers. So between those, between those two EQs, there's another voicing, which is called UNR, which is a unified natural response, which basically is kind of a curve that's a little bit, you could say it's more musical, it's more reminiscent of some of the earlier Adam models. And, and to my ears, it's actually got quite a lot more bottom end. Um, so depending on your taste and, and again, what your room's doing, that setting could be really handy. And then the third setting is the external setting, which allows you to access the presets and save and load presets from the sound ID uh, calibration software. The upshot of all this stuff is that you can voice these speakers in a lot of different ways. For me, it's often about not having too much treble because I find too much treble if you're mixing for days on end, it just wears you down. Um, so that softness in the in these tweeters is kind of takes care of that for me. I didn't find that fatiguing, which was good. So they're very flexible, these, these speakers. The one thing I'd say is that in order to access and use the software, you have to network your speakers to the computer. So there's an ethernet port on the back of each of these and you need a router to get that to talk to your computer. So there's a bit of extra wiring that's involved in doing that. But once you've got it all in play, um, it's, um, it's a really nice system and it's, it's easy to change the voicing really quickly. So uh, lots of control there. I'd definitely be more than happy to mix and track with these speakers on a full-time basis. I, I really haven't found any fault with them. The only, my only small niggle is, that's just an ergonomics thing, is originally I had them lying flat and when I was reaching around the back to turn the power on, they've got a volume control on the back which has got a very soft little centre detent and it's, the pots are very sort of slick, they move very really easily. It's quite easy to nudge it off centre detent and obviously that's pretty important. That's really the only only criticism I could find of them. I'd certainly uh, recommend them as a all-round studio tool. Um, yeah, I wouldn't have a, would, absolutely would not have an issue mixing on these full time. Thanks for watching this. You can read the full review of the speakers uh, at audiotechnology.com and hopefully see you next time.